Professor Singer, there are a number of people interested in what it would take for you to become a Christian. Um, so maybe I will invite you to say maybe a little bit more about who you think Jesus Christ is or was, uh, or how you understand his, his life and teachings. And maybe just reflect more generally as you, you've mentioned some aspects of Christian belief that you find particularly offensive. Um, are there aspects of Christianity that uh, you either are attracted to or, or find less offensive? Um, but in particular, how you understand, uh, say a little bit more about uh, the life and teachings of Jesus. Uh, right. Uh, well, I mean, uh, obviously from what I've said, one of the things it would take for me to become a Christian would be to have a plausible answer to the problem of evil, um, which I don't. Uh, um, but even if I did, um, I think uh, I could not see myself becoming a Christian. Um, and partly, I guess, this leads into the answer to that Question, I don't think that the life of Jesus is um, the most admirable one can imagine. I wouldn't really want to take it as a model. Uh, there are some things in it that I admire, in, particularly, in particular the emphasis on the poor, as, as we've been talking about it, on helping the poor. Um, but there's some rather strange things in it too. Um, I've sometimes also quoted a couple of incidents that I find difficult to understand. One is from the point of view of someone concerned about animals, uh, the incident of the Gadarene swine when Jesus uh, took out devils and cast them into a herd of swine and the swine then ran down the hill and drowned themselves. Uh, why did he do that? Um, <laughs> you know, if he could take, cast out devils, why couldn't he make them vanish into thin air uh, rather than drowning the poor pigs, not to mention the people who presumably owned the pigs and were now bereft of, uh, <laughs> of, of a means of a livelihood. Uh, difficult to interpret. Uh, and then there's the incident of the fig tree. Um, when uh, he wanted, uh, he saw a fig tree and, uh, and asked for some figs and was told that the, there were no figs. Um, and at least one of, I think there's a couple of gospel accounts, if I remember rightly, one of them says because the time of figs was not. Um, uh, so, you know, it wasn't like it was a useless fig tree, it just was a fig tree and it wasn't the season for figs. And Jesus cursed it. Um, and the next day they come past it and, um, uh, and, and look, it's died. Um, that seems a really petulant act, I have to say. Um, uh, a petulant I didn't act. realize you were a literalist reading of the Bible, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not. You and uh, Jerry Falwell share much in common. <laughs> you see, the question is, if we if we if we don't take these as true accounts, then what do we take, right? How, do, how then we're in the business of distilling the essential message while leaving out the little stories. Um, and, and it's hard then to work out what exactly the essential message is. I mean, uh, one of them certainly is uh, that the world is coming to an end pretty soon. And, uh, you know, some of you listening to me are, are still going to be around um, when that happens. So it <laughs> seems not to have been a very accurate prophet either. Um, and that's another problem, I guess. Now, you know, if, we, if we're going to talk about uh, some version which doesn't deal with these details, we obviously need a lengthy discussion as to what we do take from it. Um, and I'm not even really quite sure where we would begin then. Yeah.